Hello and welcome to another episode of Sound of Ominous. I'm Ominous and today we will react to the top 10. Why, why do I always say top 10? The, yeah, because I that's the most that's the most cover thing I'm doing on air, but I'm doing the 100, I think. Yeah, the 100 best albums of the 1980s. Um, the cover is Replacements Loud B, Michael Jackson's Twitter, of course, Madonna self titled. Um, I think Peter Gabriel in the left corner, in the, you know, the left, yeah, there we go, the left bottom. Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. I've re reviewed that. We'll, uh, I will, I, I think, upload that tomorrow. You know, uh, if you're watching this, it's already up, I think. Talking at Remain in Light, not a big Talking Heads fan, but it is a good album. Uh, Tom Waits, Rain Dogs, same thing. And Prince Purple Rain, one of my all-time favorites, so um, definitely a good cover. Uh, what, do, what do I think is going to be on there? Uh, probably the Pesh Mode album. Uh, Nine Inch Nails, pretty hate machine, I love that record. Uh, I, I hate it, but Appetite, they're gonna drop Appetite on there because it's fucking that overbloated band. It, it's expected. Um, how is this other one called again? Um, or, well, well yeah, uh, U2's The Joshua Tree, of course, War, Boy, you know, they're gonna throw the whole U2 discography on there because Rolling Stone loves to suck their dick. Uh, but U2 is a great band, so I hope they, you know, I hope they're gonna be on the list because it's fucking U2, come on now. Maybe The Rolling Stones would tell you their last, you know, good album in my opinion, so there we go. Prince Purple Rain cover. Uh, yeah, 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 the Beastie Boys Lies of the Ills. So those are some predictions. Uh, spoiler alert, Beastie Boys was number one on the best debut albums, Lies of the Ills. So, yeah, they're probably, they, they might be number one on this list too. I don't think so, but maybe, who knows. First and Entries here, Spend the Clashes, Polygot Punk, Prince Co Crossover Funkadelica, however you say that, Ever Bob from Talking At, and Paul Simon, Hymns of Innocence and Experience. Uh, Hymns of Experience. I was very scared that Innocence or something by U2 was going to be on there, but that is a 2010's album, and that album sucks ass. You know, I don't care how, mu how much you love U2 Rolling Stone, but that album sucks ass. I mean, I'm, I'm a big U2 fan, and I've, the album is fucking terrible, I mean, come on. And Experience by U2, what? Hymns of Innocence and Experience by U2, but that, this is a, that's a recent album. What the fuck? U2 is an 80s band, but what? I don't, I don't get that. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna talk, you know, uh, if you have never watched one of these videos, I'm gonna talk about the album uh, that is on the list. If I love it, I'm gonna talk about it. If I hate it, I'm gonna talk about it. If I, if I have a strong emotion about the album, I'm gonna talk about it. One of those two things, love, love them or hate them. If I'm in the middle, if I'm, if I'm in a gray area or, or I don't know it, I'm just gonna say the title, the name, and I'm gonna move on. If you think, oh, you don't know that, and you hate me for it, then you know, go go right ahead and slam me. But that's just me. I can only listen to so much music. So there we go, or you know, want to. Uh, number one hundred is Artists United Against Apart Apartheid, and it's actually a Dutch title, Apartheid, which means uh, strange or unique, or yeah, you're just a weirdo. Sun City, never heard of that. So there we go. Number 99 is uh, Wash Not Washed by What Up Duck, that's a dumbass title and a pretty ugly cover, so there we go. Number 98, Lover of Love by UB4, the terrible band, fucking hell. Number 97 is uh, Graham Parker, the Mona Lisa sister, that looks kind of look, look disrespectful to Mona Lisa, so there we go. Number 96 is uh, Culture Club, uh, Color by Numbers, if you don't know Culture Club, come 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 you know that band, the meme band. Number 95 is uh, Mellencamp, Scarecrow by John Cougar, for the guy, but never really did. Uh, Spark my interest, number 94 is Power, Corruption and Live, a new order, G good album by a good band. Uh, nice cover too, with the, with the flowers and stuff, so that's, that's a good one. Number 93 is The Night I Fell in Love by Luther Vandross. Number 92 is Full Moon, Full Moon Fever by Tom Petty. 
looks good, I've never heard it, but uh, if you want to request it, then there you go. Number 91 is Lila Love It by Lila Love It. Number 90 is Nothing Like the Sun by Sting. Not a big Sting fan, but uh, his early stuff is kind of alright. Uh, number 89 is Who's Zooming Who by Rita Franklin. Number 88 is Lives in the Balance by Jackson Brown. My computer wants to fucking hurry up a bit. Number 87 is Steel Wheel by The Rolling Stones. I've never heard of that album before. Number 86 is The River by Bruce Springsteen. Oh my god. Yeah, Bruce Springsteen is gonna dominate this list. Bruce Springsteen and U2, those are the two acts that Rolling Stone loves to suck off. And one I love, one, one I agree with, and the other one I fucking loathe. In that, in that respect, door. So there we go. Number 85 is Freedom by Neil Young. Number 84 is Favorite George Michael, great album, uh, definitely you speak. Um, yeah, I would say the best George Michael album if you include Wham too. <coughs> uh, Freedom is great, you know, his follow-up album and older is a very mature album, but this is definitely his most uh, catchy and his most <coughs> acclaimed album, so definitely a recommendation for me. Number 83 is Let's Dance with David Bowie, definitely a... <coughs> Uh, a very commercial album for David Bowie. It's not his best album by a long shot, but it's it, it is one of the last records by Bowie that I really invested myself in. After that, I kind of lost interest in Bowie. He's still a great artist. I mean, it's fucking Bowie, but um, definitely a decline in quality after that, or you know, uh, whenever that record was released. But that's of course debatable. Number eighty-two is East Side Story by Squeeze. Number eighty-one is Nineteen Eighty-Four by Van Halen. Um, yeah, classic album, uh, Jump is on air, uh, Panama, uh, Hot for Teachers, a personal favorite of mine. Well, it's just kind of a, a general favorite, I, I suppose. Great solo, great drum intro by Alex Van Halen. Just a truly great Halen album. Uh, I, I think we all know which is the best Halen album, but this is definitely a, a close second. Or a second place uh, runner up, I suppose, because you're not gonna get to the debut level, but uh, there, there you go. Number 80 is Susanna Vega by Susanna Vega. Number 79 is Guitar Time by Steve Earle. Number 78 is Robbie Robertson by Robbie Robertson. Should that 10 times in a row? Fuck no. Number 77 is There by the Human League. Number 76 is Second Edition by Public Image uh, LTD, the band with. Uh, how's it called again? Johnny Rotten. How, uh, oh, how, how can you forget the, the Godfather of Punk? I suppose, but uh, you know, he's good. Uh, you know, I like the Sex Pistols, not a, not a huge fan of public image, but uh, you know, Johnny Rotten does him, so there we go, you know, I respect him for that, so there we go. Uh, number 75 is She's So Unusual by Cindy Lauper. Uh, yeah, good artist, I do like her. Um, she has never really made a bad album, I suppose, but she has never made a truly great album. This is definitely her best speak, you know, her debut album. Uh, I believe, you know, Girls Is One Have Fun on Air, which was a cover, I believe. And uh, probably my favorite Cindy Lauper song, How to Call It Again, Time After Time, that's a great one, so definitely check her out. She's a very talented girl. Um, I would say she's better than Madonna in my opinion. I, I just think that Madonna is really overrated, and I think Cindy Lauper is pretty good, so there we go. Number 74, one of my all-time favorites, Sound of the Time for Prince, amazing record. Uh, of course, Purple Rain is going to be on there too, but you definitely cannot go wrong with Sound of the Times. I've recently been on a huge Prince kick. I just love the guy. He's a great. He can play fucking 27 instruments. He's just a fucking dude. Uh, just an amazing album by an amazing artist. I mean, check him out, man, Prince, if you haven't already. Uh, number 73 is Building the Perfect Beat by Don Handy. Going from greatness to dog shit. Fucking hell. Uh, Rolling Stone is so inconsistent. How is Sound of the Time 74? Like fucking all. Number 72, Marshall Crenshaw, Crenshaw by Marshall Crenshaw. That's a dumb name, but there we go. Number 71 is Crowded House by Crowded House. Number 70 is Traveling Wilburys Volume 1 by Tra Traveling Wilburys. Uh, we're on the third right now, you know, you know, I only have 30 minutes to record these videos, so there we go. Number 69 is Radio by LL Cool J, good debut album. I don't really like LL Cool J. He, uh, has some good songs, you know, Mama Said Not Yow is pretty much his best album. Uh, he is really overrated, I only think he only has really one good album, which is uh, Mama Said Not Yow. 
this album is really overrated. Um, this follow up album kind of flopped. Uh, yeah, El Kuz is pretty bad, but that's an okay album, I guess. Uh, how how is it a buff sound at the time? So that's bullshit. Number 68 is the special by the specials. Number 67 is Trouble in Paradise by Randy Newman. Number 66 is Fio on the Bayou. Baju, however you want to say it, the, the Neville brothers. A crocodile that's on fire. I don't support animal cruelty, but. Well, I won't say that the cover looks pretty cool, but it's it's kind of fucked up. A crocodile on fire. Like, fucking hell. Number 65 is In My Tra by 10,000 Maniacs. Uh, number 64 is Vivid by Living Color. Number 63 is Entertainment by Gang of Four. Number 62 is Pyromania with Def Leppard, a uh, very overrated album. It has some okay songs on it, but I don't think it's it deserves to be like a diamond selling album. And it's basically like a 9-11 photo shoot or something. Def Leppard predicted 9-11 or whatever. Uh, yeah, very overrated album. If you want to put it on there, I guess, but I really don't like Def Leppard. Number 61 is Dock at the Radio Station. Uh, by Captain Beaver and the Magic Band. Number 60 is The Blue Mask by uh, Lou Reed. Uh, yeah, this looks very similar to, I believe, his debut album, which also uh, had his, his face on the cover. Um, I have no idea if this is like a follow up album. I still have to listen to uh, Lou Reed's um, you know, solo stuff. But if you want to request it, I'm definitely up for it because I, I am a big Lou Reed fan. I'm a big Felt Underground fan, so there we go. Number 59 is Computer Games by George Clinton. Number 58 is The Indestructible Beat of Soweto by various artists. I don't know why Rolling Stone keeps putting up these various artists uh, on their list. It doesn't make any sense. Number 57 is Pete Townsend, Empty Glass. I didn't know he had a solo career, so maybe I should check his solo career out because it did instantly recognize his face. Pretty cool album cover with him as a sort of angel with a halo around his head with two chicks around him. Uh, you know, I thought he was into Charles, maybe they are Charles. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to hell. Uh, but uh, I've yet to check it out. But, but if you want to request it, I'm up for that because I'm a big Who fan. I love Pete Townsend, there we go. Number 56 is a Closer by Joy Division. I've reviewed this album, I've never really listened to it again. I've yet to listen to their uh, debut album, uh, Ple Pleasures Unknown or something, that's really acclaimed album. Um, it was a good album, but I've never li really listened to it again. It doesn't really have a lot of re replay value to me, but it is one of those records probably that grows on you with time, I suppose. Number 55 is Centerfield with John Vogarty. Uh, I'm a fan of Credence, but I've yet to check out the John Fogarty album, but I do like the guy. Uh, 54 is Speaking in Tongues by Talking Heads. Uh, I like Talking Heads, well, they're not really for me, but it's probably alright. Number 53 is Bring the Family with John Hyatt. Number 52 is Making Moves by Dire Straits. I don't really like Dire Straits, I think Mark Knopfler is one of the most overrated guys ever. Uh, and I believe Brothers and Arts is probably going to top this list or something and I just don't like them honestly. Number 51 is uh, Run DMC self titled they are why they have some good songs but overall I don't think they're one of the all time greatest acts ever. Like Rolling Stone uh, suggests. Uh, number 50 if the space wants to fucking load. Madonna, Madonna, uh, not a big fan of her. Uh, I like Holiday, that's a good song with a bad music video. Uh, bad, really bad music video, but Madonna making a bad music video, that's nothing new. I don't really know anything else from that album, so I cannot really judge it, but I do like that one song. Now, uh, number 49 is Defeated by Crazy Rhythms. Number 48 is uh, Skylarking by XCC. Not a big fan of XCC. Or no, no, that was LTC. Uh, TLC, no, I don't like TLC. I don't know Ecstasy though, that might be a good band. I don't like the girl group TLC and, and the program, I suppose. Number 47 is Private Dancer by Tina Turner, not a big fan of her too, she's alright. Number 46 is Peter Gabriel, Peter Gabriel, which is often referred to as Melt because I've reviewed it and called it Melt, so there we go. It's a good album, 
definitely a big fan of Peter Gabriel. I do prefer him over Phil Collins. Uh, you know, I do like Phil Collins too, but I do think he's kind of overrated in a way. Good drummer, not a big fan of his solo stuff, but he's, but he's still good. Number 45 is Daydream Nation by Sonic Youth. Def definitely want to get into Sonic Youth a bit more. They are definitely a talented band. Definitely a fit as fuck uh, front woman, so I, I do like their, you know, them as a whole. So there we go. Uh, number 44 is Oh Mercy by Bob Dylan. Number 43 is Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen. I've recently reviewed this. It's not up yet, but I will spoil the rating. It's probably one of my lowest rating records ever. I fucking hate this album. It's so boring, it's so bland, it's so lifeless. It's, uh, the cover, the, my thumbnail is actually a bowl of uh, cereal without milk. It's just dry cereal without any liquids or something. It's just dry as fuck. Uh, so there we go. Uh, I don't like Bruce Springsteen, so uh, be prepared to dislike that if you are a Bruce Springsteen fan. But if you are a Bruce Springsteen fan, I would suggest stay away from my channel because I fucking love this guy. Number 42 is Strong Persuader by Robert Craband. I do like that word, Persuader. I <coughs> never heard of him though. Speaking of Overrated X41 Document by REM, uh, I've recently reviewed Automatic for the People too. I believe that's up. It has a really low rating and it is pretty much their masterpiece, their masterpiece supposedly, so there we go. I probably hate document too, so I will probably not review a REM record anymore. They're just fucking terrible. Number 40 is War by U2, a good album. Um, I'm definitely a big fan of this album. It's not the best U2 album, but um, Rolling Stone will get into that a bit later. I'm kind of surprised that there are not any more U2 records in here. Uh, hopefully, uh, The Unforgettable Fire will make that. This arc be my personal favorite U2 album. Number 39 is Eliminator by ZZ Top. Uh, very overrated band, I don't really like them. They're alright, you know, they're an okay band, but I do think they're just so overblown. And what's more, you're calling them an underrated band, this is bullshit, honestly. Number 38 is um, Imperial Bedroom by Elvis Costello and the Attractions. If the page wants to load again. Oh my, yeah, fucking hell, mate. Uh, number 36. Seven is Midnight Love by Marvin Gaye. I didn't even know that Marvin Gaye still made music in the 80s. Or maybe it's a posthumous record because I don't know when he was murdered. Probably in the mid 80s or something. I, I, you know, I thought he was dead way earlier, but I don't know. Crazy Dad. Cra you know, rest in peace to Marvin Gaye. Crazy Dad. I've never heard of it all. But if you want to request it, I'm up for it. So there we go. Number 36 is Rapture by Anita Baker. Number 35 is Kill Em All by Metallica. Classic debut album. I hope they're gonna include all the 80s albums by Metallica. I did not expect this album to be on there. Uh, I've recently reviewed this. I've yet to make a description for it because I'm a lazy fuck, but uh, I do like this album. It's, it's a great debut album, so there we go. It's Metallica, of course, so it's kind of obvious. Uh, yeah, and this was a record I predicted. A Tattoo You by the Rolling Stones. Definitely the, the last great Rolling Stones album, or good at least. Uh, yeah, it's a good album. Um, what hit is on there, uh, Start Me Up, that's a good one. Um, that I haven't really, honestly I really listened to the Stones, but uh, I've heard that this is like their last great album, so definitely check it out. If you are a big Stones fan, but if you are a big Stones fan, then you've probably checked this one out before, so there we go. Uh, number 33 is Zen Arcade by Husker Du, that is a good title, and I believe that uh, one of my fans has this as their profile picture, which it looks pretty cool, so there we go. It's like a, an, um, an auto an auto car, a garbage um, d disposer or something, I don't know how you say that, but whatever. I'm not the best with words, like you, like you know. Number 32 is Uh Huh by John Cougar, Mellencamp. You know, with a title like that, I'm not even going to talk about you. Uh -huh. 31 is uh, Avalon by Roxy Music. Number 30 is How Would the Wolf Survive by Los Lobos. If the page wants to get it on. Number 29 is Double Fantasy by John Lennon and Yoko Oh no, I believe this was the last John Lennon album before he passed away. I honestly think that John Lennon is one of the most overrated solo artists ever. Uh, he only really has two good albums, you know, Imagine, which is one of the most overrated albums. And 
That one album with the Plastic Ono band, that was a good album, you know, where they're sitting under the tree. And Yoko Ono isn't actually doing a fucking thing, she's just looking at John Lennon like, he, he is the tented one, I'm gonna, you know, let, let him do his job and don't ruin anything like I did on Unfinished Music. Those are two of the most polarizing albums ever, like fucking all, mate. And here they're kissing, I mean, I don't mind this album, it's, it's influenced by Yoko Ono, of course. I, I, Fucking a joke on him, come on. Uh, oh wow, I actually thought this record would get way higher on the list, but it's only 28, uh, and I'm happy for that. 28, uh, probably my most despised band ever. 28, Epitaph for Destruction. <coughs> I'm choking in the terribleness of this album. <coughs> well, honestly, you know, it's fucking Epitaph for Destruction with Guns N' Roses. It's a good album, I, I cannot deny this all, but it's one of the most overrated albums ever. It's, it's a, you know, it's, it's good, but... If I would never hear this album again, I wouldn't complain, but it's definitely a classic album, but... You know, it's one of those good albums by bad bands. This album right here, so there we go. It's one of those. Uh, number 27 is Control by Janet Jackson. Definitely want to get into Janet Jackson a bit more because she was uh, featured on uh, How, How Skulls uh, Masterpiece Reviews by Consequence of Sounds. I sometimes check them out and they have you know their Masterpiece Reviews which I really love. And they actually got taken down recently so you cannot view them anymore but you can still go to their site and read what they have to, had to say about the album briefly. Uh, and Rhythm to the Nation by Jen Janet Jackson was on there, so I'm definitely interested to check her out. I definitely love a good pop artist and Janet Jackson. I mean, she's the, the sister of the legend himself, the Jackson, you know, the most famous one, obviously. So uh, definitely want to check her out because she's definitely an interesting artist. And the interesting thing about it is that she was featured on that list. But Michael Jackson wasn't, so apparently Michael Jackson is overrated to them, but Janet Jackson ain't. She has a masterpiece, according to them, if you still follow me. I, you know, I guess, I, you know, I do prefer the, the, the more obvious Jackson, of course, but, uh, the, you know, Janet Jackson, it, she's kind of underrated to it. <laughs> to, she's kind of underrated in a way, you know, not to say that Michael's underrated, but... Thriller's the, the best-selling album ever, underrated, sure, but uh, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Definitely want, want to get into her, if you guys want to request it. Number 26 is Back in Black by ACDC, recently reviewed this, it's, it's a classic hard rock album, uh, it's good. Hell's Bells is a favorite of mine, Back in Black is on there, Rock and Roll, A North Pollution is uh, one of my personal favorites, so. Great album, check it out if you haven't already. Number 25 is Tunnel of Love by Bruce Springsteen, oh my god, more Bruce Springsteen on here. I haven't heard it before and I will probably not uh, accept it if you guys do request it. Number 24 is Los Angeles by X. Number 23 is Red Island by Black Uru. Uhuru, however you say it. Number 22 is Dismissed by the Smiths. Recently, recently reviewed as two great debut album by a great band. Not their best album, but definitely I would say their second best or their third best. But they only have four albums, so that's only to say how great of a band they are. Number 21 is Rain Dogs with Tom Waits. Uh, I want to get into Tom Waits because a lot of people around me uh, praise Tom Waits for that he is an amazing artist. So definitely request it if you are interested in me reviewing him. So there we go. Number 20 is Pretend by Pretenders. Don't say that's Joan Jett, I'm not gonna get into that. Number 19 is New York by Lou Reed. Uh, yeah, you know, same thing with the, with the blue one. Uh, want to get into him, so definitely request it. Uh, number 18 is kind of an odd choice. Um, I love this album, don't get me wrong, Dirty Mind My Prince. I, I love this album, but I don't think it is miles above Sign of the Times. I think that Sign of the Times is top 10 worthy for this list. Dirty Mind, I still would have put, put it on there because the, I love the production on this album, I love the songs. But I don't think it deserves to be 50 spots above uh, Sign of the Times. I don't agree with that. but. But if Sign of the Times was a little bit higher on this list, you know, Dirty Mind could have been on 18, but I think it should have been a bit lower. Uh, but there we go, you know, that's my opinion. But it's still print, so I'm still happy for that. Number 17 is Synchronicity by The Police. Definitely the most acclaimed album by The Police, I believe. Well, no, no, that's three albums in the 80s, I believe. Um, Zenyana Mondetta, I believe. Or it was 79, I don't know. Ghost in the Machine and this one. 
This is their most acclaimed album, definitely a good album. Uh, Synchronicity 2 is on there, the self-titled. Uh, Every Breath You Take, of course, is on there. Uh, Wrapped Around Your Fingers, one of my personal favorites. This is definitely a good album by a good band, so definitely, definitely check it out. Number 16 is 1999 by Prince. Uh, you know, I love that Prince is like dominating right now, you know, with Sound at the Time, Dirty Mind, 1999, and later on with uh, Purple Rain. That's only to say how great of an artist he is. I mean, Prince having already four records, no, 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 three records already with Purple Rain coming up, coming up of course. Fucking up. Purple Rain coming up, of course. And Michael Jackson not even being on here once, you know, with that or Trainer. But Trainer is gonna probably top this list, but uh, that's only to say, you know, you know, I love both artists, I love both of them. You know, I'm not here to create a war or something, kind of, because I, because I like to create uh, controversy, you know, because it's funny. Great album of Prince, too. <laughs> But uh, great album, all of this all, and it's just amazing. It's an epic, it's just another great Prince record, you know? Expected from uh, from Prince, so there we go. Number 15 is Let It Be by The Replacer. I definitely heard a lot of, uh, about this band. They, they were covered in Masterpiece Review, so I'm definitely interested to check them out if you guys do want to request them. Number 14 is Show by Peter Gabriel. Definitely have to check this one out. It will probably be requested by Rock2 if he sees this, but I, I believe he's kind of out of it right now, but uh, we will hear from him maybe soon. Or maybe one of you guys want to request it because you are a big P Peter Gabriel fan, maybe. I don't know. Number 13 is Diesel and Dust by Midnight Oil. Oil, Midnight Oil. I've never really heard of this band. I believe Bats Are Burning are, is like a big hit by this band, but besides that, I've never really gone into this band. Uh, number 12 is It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. Arguably uh, the most overrated rap group ever. I don't really like Public Enemy. Um, you know, I think for what they did, they were an acclaimed ex. And, you know, Fear of Black Planet inspired one of my all time favorite albums. Uh, you know, the title at least, I don't fucking know, but uh, there we go. Um, I don't like this album. I've reviewed it if you want to check it out, but I do not like this album, honestly. Number 11 is um, Get Happy by Elvis Costello and The Attractions. Number 10 is Tracy Chapman by Tracy Chapman. Uh, actually in one watch Mojave I thought this was a dude, but she, uh, she's actually a girl, Tracy Chapman. Tracy, it is a girl's name, so I could have guessed. Good album, I think it's a bit overblown, but it is a good debut, debut album by an otherwise very forgettable artist. Number 9 is... Uh, Shoot Out the Light by Richard and Linda Thompson. Number 8 is Murmur by R.E.M. Their debut album, I believe. I do, just do not like R.E.M. Like, what the fuck is that cover? Like, some. The cover is really weird, in a way, but I just do not like R.E.M., honestly. The text be, be get, you know the text becomes so long in the top ten like fucking hell. Uh, Michael Jackson's trailer only have four minutes left, so I kind of have to wrap it up right now. Uh, yeah, definitely a classic of mine. Recently added this to my all-time favorite list. It is a classic uh, pop album. I love this. It's the best-selling album ever. 50 million uh, sales, I believe, or 70 million. You know, ACDC Back in Black being the second. Uh, highest selling album ever, which is kind of an old move since it is hard rock heavy metal. But yeah, of course, this album being a pop album is not really a big surprise. You know, definitely deserves it. Great album by a legendary pop artist. Number six, oh, this is insulting. Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. I mean, this being a Bob trailer is just fucking atrocious. Bad album, honestly. <sighs> Born in the USA, I'm long gone. Darling. <laughs> Number five is Graceland by Paul Simon. Uh, definitely want to get into Paul Simon. Very talented, tal fucking you know, talented songwriter. He's very acclaimed, so I definitely want to check him out. If you do want to request him, then uh, I'll definitely check him out. You know, uh, if you guys are interested. Number four is Remain in Live with Talking at one of the most acclaimed bands ever that I don't really get into. I think the cover looks kind of dumb with them, you know, the faces kind of smeared out with red paint or something, and it looks kind of weird. Uh, talking Heads is a good band, but I never really got into them, honestly. But if you do want to request them, I'm, I'm up for that. Number three is uh, The Joshua Tree by YouTube, of course, one of the most best selling albums ever, I believe. Uh, Where the Streets of No Names. 
bit of the blue sky, uh, so what found we're looking for. Uh, Red Hill Mining Town, one of my personal favorites. There's like one other song that I'm forgetting, and with or without you, the, the biggest you do it ever, arguably. So, uh, great album. I love this album. It's front to back, uh, a great record. So there we go. It's it's an amazing album. Number two is uh, Purple Rain, my Prince. Uh, fantastic album. Um, yeah, I, you know, I thought this might top the list, but it is number one, so I'm kind of guessing which is number one right now. We can guess because we still have a bit of time left. Uh, oh, we have two minutes left, so we can guess for a little bit. Uh, yeah, great album, of course. When those, when those cars on here, Let's Go Crazy, one of my all time favorite album openers. Uh, there's just controversial song on there with, with a girl's name on it. I forgot that one, uh, Blue Computer is on there, you know, I have to re-listen to this album again, because I haven't listened to Purple Rain in a while. But it is an amazing album, I, you know, I love Prince, this is definitely like his peak. Shout out to the Times 2, that could have been way higher, but Purple Rain is of course his magnum opus. What is number one though? Uh, I cannot really guess for long. Um, License to Ill by Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys haven't, haven't been on here for once, not False Boutique 2. So it will probably be Lodged O again, since it was their number one for the debut albums too. So yeah, probably Beastie Boys. And it's not even on here. All right. Um, London Calling by The Clash. Is this a is this an eighties album though? I thought it was nineteen seventy or something. Definitely an important album in punk music, uh, I do like it, it is a good album, but I don't think it's, well, it's one of those records that I don't really mind, if it's number one, you know, that's that's the thing, but I don't really mind it. Uh, London Calling, is it from the 80s though? I thought it was like 1979. But maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it, it Oh my fuck, fuck Rolling Stone. It's 1979, December 14th. So this is a 1979 record. It's a 70s record. Oh my God, Rolling Stone ends on the fucking 70s record. It's not even from the 80s. Fuck Rolling Stone, Purple Rain deserves to be number one. It's a good album, it's not even from the 80s. Fuck off Rolling Stone.